What's up guys, I'm gonna be talking about the five things I wish I knew when I first started lifting. I'm gonna take you guys on an upper body workout at Lakeview and LA Fitness. I mean LA Fitness and Lakeview. But first, let's try some of this new sour watermelon, my protein clear way. Get the scoop. Yeah, bro, you got the shit in your fucking hand, bro. <clears throat> Dude. This thing, there's always a plume when I pour it in. Let me know if you guys want to see me try every single flavor. Let my pre let my protein know too. Damn! <clears throat> hey, try not to swear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait for it to settle. Let's wait like 15 seconds. Also, I'm joined by uh, my friends today. <laughs> The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Let me get these uh, demilitarized zone shot glasses. <laughs> I know there's one more. I'll give Frankie this Chris Kendall Market mug. All right, guys. Oh, bro. Is that the only one that saw that? What? <laughs> Extra protein. All right, guys. Who wants, who wants the big one? You want, you want it? All right, cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Not bad, right? Pretty good. This is good. It's good, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Clear whey protein, guys. I'm telling you right now. It's candy. All right, we're gonna get on to the workout. We'll see y'all there. To get to the first thing I wish I knew when I first started lifting is to control the eccentric. In the beginning, I was super focused on just increasing weight on all my lifts that I would literally just like disregard the eccentric because it is more work. You're gonna have to, you're gonna be weaker if you control the eccentric for every single lift. With that said, think about the eccentric as literally half the movement. If you neglect it and just let's say dive bomb on bench press, you're not gonna be getting as much benefit in that specific lift as you can. Now, how I personally like to control the eccentric is I put a three to four second tempo on pretty much every single lift I do. So let's hit the set. So we're going to be doing a frontal plane pull down with this converging cable pull down. And I'm going to talk about my second point. The second thing I wish I knew when I first started lifting is less is more. This is in regards to your volume. When I first started, I used to do like four sets everything. Four sets 12 for like six different exercises. At the time I was doing a bro split too. So imagine doing a chest day where you have four or five exercises you're going to do all for four sets. I started getting this mindset where I'm just trying to get to the end of the workout, right? I'm just like, all right, going through the motions, set one done. By the time I get to my second exercise, fifth set of chest, I'm already mentally checked out. Nowadays, what I do and what I recommend for a lot of new lifters do is keep the, keep the volume a little bit lower, right? You can get away with doing six to 10 sets per muscle group on the week, and you just make the quality of each set better. I mean, you're lifting with intention, you're controlling the eccentric like the first point I made. Doing that, in my opinion, is not only more efficient, but you get more bang for your buck and you just get better effort there. So let me hit the set, let's get to it. Oh, my music first. Whew. 
Oh, see if I did a set like that eight times within a workout for one muscle group, I'd be gassed. All you need is like two or three of those per workout in a given day for the muscle group. So take that tip, you're gonna be making more gains in a more efficient manner. Third thing I wish I knew when I first started lifting is longer rest times. Originally I got into lifting because of track and field, so my cardio was good, and I rationalized to myself, like, oh man, if I keep my heart rate up high, like, all I really need is a minute of rest and I'll be fine. So I was basically treating my lifting sessions as like bona fide cardio sessions. But if your main priority is to build muscle, you want to be giving yourself adequate rest times. A good rule of thumb for a compound movement is three minutes of rest, for isolation exercise, two minutes. Now you might be thinking, Tyler, I do not need three minutes rest in between each set. Yeah, maybe if you're not training hard enough, but trust me, if you're doing a compound movement like, let's say, squats, and you're going very close to failure, if not to failure, you will need those three minutes. Trust me, I'm telling you right now. And if you think you're going to failure or going close to it, you're probably likely not training as hard as you can be, either by controlling the eccentric or just really pushing yourself more. So we're gonna be doing this unilateral row, supersetting with a high to low fly kneeling. Now first, what I wanna talk about is the fourth thing I wish I knew when I first started lifting. And that is not to overestimate my body's ability to recover. Whether it be an injury or you're just sick, you wanna listen to your body, give it the right rest it needs. Because if you go to the gym while you're in a subpar condition, you're gonna get a subpar workout. At the end of the day, it's just not worthwhile doing something like that. Now you take a look at my finger. Notice how it's crooked. The reason why it is crooked is I broke my finger about three years ago. The doctor told me after surgery I should give a two month break before I go back to the gym. Well, I ended up going back prematurely after like a month and a half. And because of that, I was using my right hand and now my finger's crooked forever because I just didn't give it the proper rest time it did. But since I started about two weeks early, would it have made that much of a dis difference in the grand scheme of things if I just waited the whole two months Probably not. Biggest thing, everyone wants to go to the gym and they want to be super consistent. But I'm telling you, like, never missing a workout needs context. If you're injured, if you're sick, you want to prioritize your recovery. I'm gonna do a voiceover because my voice got cut off in the clip. But the fifth thing I wish I knew when I first started lifting was to make fitness a lifestyle. 
So instead of treating fitness as a means to an end, you need to approach fitness as you're pretty much going to do it for the rest of your life, right? Because if you really think about it, it's like you reach your fitness goals, it's not like you stop training. And sure, it's like, okay, maybe your diet will change because you're not going to be in a deficit or you're not going to be in a surplus. But in general, you're still going to be prioritizing a high protein diet if you're trying to, you know, maximize your growth potential. So I find that it's the people that enjoy their training, right? The people that enjoy what they eat who ha end up having the best success with their fitness goals and really just crushing it because... At the end of the day, you can only rely so much on willpower, so you're going to need to, you know, figure something out that you actually enjoy in order for you to stick to it long term. And I don't care who you are, like, it's not a life to live if you're not actually enjoying the training you're doing. And, you know, I trust me, if you're starting to see results, like, you're going to enjoy the training. However, something I noticed from coaching a lot of people is a lot of people have the frustration that they're not seeing results as quickly as they want to. So generally, it's like, okay, their strength gains are going up, meaning they're getting stronger with their lifts, but they don't, physique-wise, they don't see the results as quickly as they want to. But it's only been like three weeks or a month, right? And I think a lot of people have, especially when they first start, they have this false timeline in their head that, okay, I'm just going to, you know, train for a couple months and then I'm going to get like, I'm going to blow up and get a great physique, but they don't realize that, you know, it's really a long-term gain at the end of the day. So that's why I, I have to stress that you need to approach fitness as a lifestyle and that shouldn't be daunting, right? That should actually be a good thing because you're living a healthier, active lifestyle. Um, overall, it's a net positive to your entire life. And as long as you're not, you don't make fitness your entire life, I don't see any problem with that. Okay. So number five, big one, make fitness a lifestyle. Alright guys, so that was the workout. Hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna go grab some food. Let's get it. Alright guys, so we are at Joe and the Juice in River North. My friend told me this place is good, so we're gonna check out what they have. I think they have like healthier food options or something like that. But I'm usually not a fan of like health type of food places, but hey, maybe this place is good, so we'll see. Okay, let's see what to get. How's it going? I think I'm gonna get some sort of sandwich. I'm not gonna lie, the acai bowl look kinda good. Auto turkey. I think I'm gonna get a turkey sandwich. Um, I'll just have a, a turkey sandwich. Joe and the Juice turkey sandwich. Let's see what it looks like. I got real mozzarella, tomato, and some pesto. Let me flip it over real quick. I don't think, I don't know, I don't know when's the last time I had a, like American kind of sandwich thing. So, it's pretty excited for this. Cheers. Mm. The, pest the pesto is good. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully these five things that I wish I knew before I started lifting are beneficial to you. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'll catch you guys in the next one.